The next step is to implement the reducer that handles AdMovies action. So let's go back to our reducer. A common way to handle reducer is by using a switch statement over action type. So let me show it how it usually works. So I use switch with action type. And if action type is case at movies, I return at movies function with state passed as the first parameter and action payload as a second one. By default, I return unchanged state. So if an action type is not recognized, uh, nothing happens to the state. Now let's implement at movies function. Function at movies. So just as we called it here. So first is state and then payload object. Payload is an object that contains a single properties, movies. So I can use the structuring and have it here directly. Okay, when a new list of movies is dispatched, I don't need the previous value of state. I just return this new list added to state. I return movies and I will pick also only several properties from movies. If I go to mock movies, we've got title, year, ID, type, poster. But in fact, I really need title, poster, and ID. So let's pick only these relevant attributes. And I'm doing it with the map function. So title is movie title, poster is movie poster, and the same goes for IMDB ID. This one is movie IMDB ID. The last thing to do is setting the proper value for initial state. We don't need the mock movies anymore. So the initial value will be just an empty array. When I remove smock movies from import, it still works. This is because our movies reducer handles action properly and sets a new value of the state when an array containing movies is dispatched. Congratulations, well done. You now know how to use Redux. We covered how to access state properties and how to emit actions to the store. In the next lessons, we will spend a bit more time working with Redux to get used to it and to show you how to structure the code properly as the application grows. Stay tuned.